already started We already won Before the battle started We already won Before the battle started We already won Before the battle started We already won You say Before the battle started We already won
Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Black History Month. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm excited about it. Welcome to New Bethel Church. For those of you who are new to New Bethel, we are in Washington, D.C. And my name is Dexter Nuttall. I'm the pastor here at New Bethel. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday in the month of February in 2021. If it's your first time with us, I need you to do me a favor. Y'all know what I need you to do. I need you to make sure, first of all, that you follow us. Make sure that you are connected with us on all of the platforms. Uh, and make sure that you text guest. Uh, to 202-798-8927 because then we can make sure that you are apprised and get all the information about everything that's taking place uh, in the life of New Bethel. few things I just want to make sure that you know off of the break. We are not gathered for in-person worship because we are uh, making sure that we are keeping COVID protocols and uh, trying to be as cautious uh, as we can while vaccine rollout happens and while uh, God is in the middle of working all this thing out, but even in the middle of, the, of all of that, God is still worthy of a great praise. So that's why we are here. If you are in Washington, D.C., I want you to know that you are able to qualify for COVID vaccine um, appointments. If you are 65 and older or if you are a healthcare worker, there is a number on your screen. I need for you to make sure that you call that number. You can also visit the website at uh, vaccine.dc.gov and you can get all the information that you need because we want to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves and taking care of one another all right and in the meantime trailblazer 2021 that's what it's all about here at new bethel uh, for this year and we are launching our courage to pivot conference it is this coming weekend y'all i'm so excited about it god is really making way for us to uh, launch into some uncharted territory and to do ministry in new fresh innovative ways and it's going to start with our conference so i need for you to make sure that you register so that you can be blessed by all the information by the insight uh, we're going to pray we're going to worship and we are going to be informed uh, by nona jones and by the kellums uh, and even by those who are part of our own new bethel family so that's this coming um, Friday and Saturday need for you guys to make sure that you are there and even share it uh, with those who are others among our congregation and community all right uh, and then also know that on uh, second Sundays we have a special um, gathering it's called the breakout it's right after church you know how we used to hang out and just kind of kick it in the pews a little bit well we we kick it in the virtual pews after uh, Sunday on second um, uh, Sundays of the month so want to make sure that you join us uh, after worship, particularly if you're new, feel free to come and ask your questions about New Bethel. Ask questions about the sermon uh, so that we can get to know each other a little bit uh, and we can um, share uh, in fellowship together. Uh, and then let me make sure I thank all of you for your gifts and for your generous giving. Uh, we have so many people who uh, continue to sow into the ministry here uh, and allow us to reach out and to provide educational services and to provide support services for our seniors uh, to deliver groceries all of that and that's because of your gifts you are making a huge difference in the kingdom you're already trailblazing so if you want to sow today um, feel free to send your gifts in by mail or you can use any of our electronic giving platforms i know that god is up to something great uh, because god is continuing to bless this house and God is continuing to bless your house as well. So today um, we have a, a new series that we're launching into Trailblazer as we m launch into our theme for the year. It's going to be a great series and then we got some folks that are making history right here at New Bethel. It's Black History Month and we're going to celebrate those who are already blazing great trails and doing great work in the kingdom and in the community. Come on let's have church today. Good morning, New Bethel. Good morning, good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And then on this morning, we worship him and we say, Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. It is with you that we belong. It's with you that we belong. We belong with you. Yes, the Lord. Hallelujah. We worship him. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. Hey! He's a holy God. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. And he's a holy God. Hey! You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. Take, you take the pain away I'm so 
Good morning, New Bethel Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Dr. Roger Mitchell, Jr. I'm so excited to be here today on Sunday morning. And you know what today is. It's February 14th, it's, it's Love Day. And we have an opportunity to take love beyond the walls of the church in this virtual environment. So we're gonna start with a scripture this morning. We're gonna start with 1 Peter 2, 15 through 17. And I'm gonna read from the New International Version. For it's God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of the foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as God's slave. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor the emperor. Love the family of believers. Live as free people is what the word of God says. And so we have an opportunity to live free. So let us pray. Father God, the most magnificent, the most merciful, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, one who has provided everything to us. We come to you right now, we thank you. We thank you for the love that you have given us, but you th we thank you for the gift of freedom, the gift of liberation. Not only the individual freedom that you have given us because we believe in you and we seek you and we love you, but we thank you for the freedom of our entire people the liberation of the slaves of old, the ancestors of old. Because you hanged on a tree, bled for us that we might be liberated. So similar on that, to that cross is the, is the lynching tree where so many died for us. And so we thank you for loving us enough to get us through those times of slavery, the times of Jim Crow, and even these times, the times where there is knees on our neck in the form of George Floyd, and times where there's civil unrest and storming of the Capitol building. Father God, we thank you for your love of us, and your example of love that we might love other people, love our enemies as we love ourselves. Father God, create better relationships for us relationships with our wives and our children and our husbands and our fathers. We pray for the fatherless and the mothers of the murdered. We pray for our pastor and his family. We pray for all that come together to serve you. So we give, us, we give you our all. We love you, we magnify you, and we glorify you. It's in your name we pray, amen and amen. Hi, my name's Anthony Mitchell. Um, I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, and spent a lot of time there. And then afterwards, once Katrina hit, we moved to Baton Rouge, where I spent the rest of my childhood. Uh, ended up, after graduating valedictorian of my high school, I moved to Penn State and did four years there, where I had a great time. After that, worked in Pittsburgh for a little bit for Mayor Bill Peduto, and then I uh, came up to D.C. about three years ago, three and a half years ago, almost four. And uh, here I am now after working on Capitol Hill, working for Mayor Bowser in her Office of uh, Community Relations and Services. What drew me to New Bethel originally um, was a friend of mine. I came up here for uh, a fellowship program with the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. And, um, you know, we were, it was always important that I connected with a church. I grew up with a pastor who said to make the word real. You know, and if I was able to do that in some in another place, then it, it'll work for me. So I, I found that in New Bethel, a place that was authentic, a place that people can be themselves, but a place that people can also pursue God, you know, in a way that is real. 
When I think about a trailblazer, I think about folks like Shirley Chisholm, like Barack Obama, um, like Kamala Harris, but also folks like my mom, right? Like everyday folks who, my mom was the first in our family to ever get a college degree. You know, she now has her MBA and that's become the new bar for all of her sons. Yeah, you know, pressure, right? Um, but, uh, you know, I think about folks like that who are trying to uh, make a way uh, that traditionally hasn't been done in their families before. Uh, I remember when I was uh, first going off to Penn State, um, I had no family in Pennsylvania, no family in the Northeast really. Uh, all my folks had been in New Orleans and Baton Rouge and Atlanta and Houston and stuff like that. Uh, and I remember sitting with myself after my mom, my auntie, and my godfather had dropped me off at Penn State and said, this is, what's gonna happen is gonna be on me. You know, and I think about all the folks who are or were in that situation that I was in um, who had to figure it out, right? And you have to go about your, your, your mission. Of course, you're gonna you're stumble, you're gonna, you know, not make the right move sometimes, but uh, who ultimately come on the other side victorious. And that's what, it, what, I, what I think of as a trailblazer, but not only are you finishing up on the other side, but you're creating a path for other people to come behind you. But I want to say something in. Um, okay. I'm Anthony Mitchell. And, and I, I approve this message. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am Anthony Mitchell, and I'm a new Bethel Trailblazer. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just, we just want to worship you real quick. Is that okay with you, God? We just want to worship with you. Let you know that we love you.
No music real quick, everybody just voice. And I will not be silent. Yeah. to God that you will always worship Him. You will always lift your voice up. You will always bless the Lord at all times. At all times in good and bad times. For as long as you shall breathe, as long as you shall breathe, you will worship Him. Yes, God. That is, that is sweet worship right there. That is a good place for you to throw up your hands and surrender to God. That's a good place for you to make an offering to God right in your room, right at your kitchen table, right in your car, wherever you are. Just offer God an offering of worship right there. God, we bless you and we thank you. We, we cannot be silent, oh God, because you've been too good. We cannot... Hold our peace because you've been too kind. We, we refuse, oh God, to let rocks cry out for us. And so we thank you, God, for your presence and for this opportunity, for this very moment. And we pray, oh God, that you would speak into our lives. Speak, oh God, even beyond and above this virtual reality that we find ourselves in because you are real. There is no virtual before you. There is no virtual to describe you. You are real. And because you are, we are. So speak, oh God, and be glorified. In the great name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So today I want to start a new series and I want to call it Trailblazer. Trailblazer. That is... The theme for 2021 here at New Bethel Church, it's trailblazer because life looks different these days and we aren't able to do the things that we have done. And even as we press forward, what it is that we do is going to look different. But, but I believe that God is giving us spirit of trailblazing. God is raising up some folk that are prepared and ready and, and, and courageous and confident and faithful enough to blaze some trails. So we're going to begin a new series today and I want to call it Trailblazer and I want to remind you to make sure that you register for the conference for, the, for this coming weekend because we're going to be ready to do some trailblazing. And as we, as, as, as we launch into this series, I, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 3 through 5. That's where I want to start this series. And I'm reading the English Standard Version. Here's what it says. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Hallelujah. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. That's Isaiah chapter 40 verses 3 through 5. Trailblazer. This is Trailblazer part one. You know, as a kid, as a kid, I, I was pretty... Um, Adventurous is the word I'll use. I, I like getting into stuff. 
I was an adventurous kid. I like to discover stuff. I like to explore. I, 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 like, I like to find new ways of doing things and to, to discover the things that were out there. I, I suspect my wife would probably say I'm still adventurous. I haven't grown out of that just yet. But one of the ways that it played out when I was a kid was when I would go to the store with my mom. Because one of the things that happened a lot when I went to the store with my mom is I would end up getting lost in the store. I, I, would, I would wander away from my mother. I, I would end up in an aisle where she was not. I, I would just end up getting lost. Sometimes it was on purpose. Sometimes it was not on purpose, but it happened more than once. I'll tell you that much. I got lost in the store. And whenever I would get lost in the store, there, there, there were a couple things that would happen. First thing that would happen is I would start to cry. I, I, would, I would start to cry because it wasn't the first time. And my mother had told me that if I got lost again, that she was going to leave me at the store. So that was the first thing that would happen when I got lost, I would, I would start to cry. But the second thing is, my mother told me that you make sure you go to the customer service desk. So I would make my way to the customer service desk and I would say, I can't find my mother. That's what I would say. Because if I went to the customer service desk, the people at the desk would announce over the loudspeaker to the whole store, Miss Nuttall, come get your son from customer service. I, I, didn't, I didn't have any other choice because when I got lost, all of a sudden the store got bigger and I had no idea where to look. I had no idea where to turn. All I saw was a whole bunch of aisles. The store just got bigger and I didn't want to get left at the store because my mother told me that if I got lost, she was going to leave me at the store. So all I could do was to cry for help. So I know a little bit about what Isaiah is talking about in verse three when, when, when he says, a voice cries in the wilderness. Because I felt like I was lost in the wilderness. I felt like I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know if I was going to make it back. I felt like I might end up being a Toys R Us kid for real, for real. But, but, but Isaiah, Isaiah is talking about something different because he's, he's talking about people who are in a wilderness for real. Because the people to whom Isaiah is writing are in exile. And, and I suspect that when you're in exile, you lose all sense of familiarity. When, when you're in exile, you don't know what direction to turn. You, you don't know whether to go left. You don't know whether to go right. You don't know whether to keep pushing. You don't know whether to keep still. You don't know whether somebody's coming for you. You don't know whether you got to make a way by yourself. When you're in exile, you have no idea what to do. And so here's what God says through the prophet Isaiah. Here's what Isaiah does. He, he, Isaiah writes in the middle of a crisis. And I need you to pay careful attention to the, to the text because he does not write about the circumstances of the crisis. Isaiah writes in a crisis about what's going to happen in the future. Isaiah is not consumed by everything that's going on, by all the chaos, by all of the loss of culture and family uh, and, and possessions. He, doesn't, he does not get consumed with the circumstances. Isaiah focuses his readers on the future. In other words, Isaiah lays out a vision for what it means to be a trailblazer. I, I need for us to see something. In the middle of the chaos, in the middle of a crisis, God, through Isaiah, issues an instruction. And the instruction is this. Prepare the way of the Lord. That's the instruction. instruction. That, that's what God says to his people who are in exile. That's what God is saying to his people who are in a crisis. He is saying, prepare the way of the Lord. 
and don't wait to do it. He says, do it not after the crisis is over. Don't wait until you're out of exile. Don't wait until things get better. Start doing it now. And I want to talk about this because here we are in a pandemic that's close to a year old. Here we are still wearing masks and using hand sanitizer. Here we are still keeping six feet distance. Here we are in this country still dealing with racism, still dealing with insurrection, still dealing with yet another impeachment, having to confront unprecedented challenges, unprecedented economic situation, unprecedented labor statistics, unprecedented uh, death st uh, statistics, trying to keep from losing our minds. And God says to his people, through the prophet, you prepare the way. That's, that, that's, what, that's what he says. I need for you to pay attention to verse three because what it says is a voice cries. And here's what the voice is saying. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. That's what the voice is saying. The, the, the voice is saying, um, while you're in the current reality, while you're in the current situation, prepare the way of the Lord. So today, I, I want to make clear that God is issuing us an instruction. God is speaking to his church. God is speaking to his people. God is speaking to his pastors and preachers. God is speaking to those who trust him and are confident in him and place faith in him. In the middle of all the chaos, in the middle of the crisis, here's what God says. God says, be a trailblazer. That's what God says, because, because first of all, life is always going to be full of shifts. God is always going to be, uh, life is always going to be full of shifts. Listen, there is almost nothing in life that we did pre-pandemic that we do the same way post-pandemic. Just think about it for a minute. We teach differently in the pandemic. We socialize differently in the pandemic. We care for our children differently in the pandemic. We, 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 go to, we, we go to eat out if we go to eat out differently in the pandemic. We dress differently in the pandemic. We church differently in the pandemic. But guess what? The journey of life will always be full of ex un unexpected events and circumstances. The, 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 the journey of life will always be full of unforeseeable situations. The, the roads in the ancient Near East were for the most part unpaved roads. They, 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 weren't, they weren't nice and smooth and, and paved uh, in the Near East. And it was necessary though for pathways to be made so that commerce could happen. And so those who were of royalty could make their way through. So what, so what the kings would do is, the king would send a messenger to tell the people that the king was coming through. And the king would expect that the people would do the work that was necessary to make a way. The king didn't send the government to do it. The king didn't send his staff to do it. The king didn't send all of those that were under the king's command to do it. The king would say, I'm coming and tell the people to open the way. And you know what? That's what trailblazers do. Trailblazers create pathways 
that were not there before in order to be able to get people to spaces that they otherwise could not get to. That's what trailblazers do. They, they, they go into spaces where there was no way made and they create a way so that somebody behind them will have an easier, smoother journey and process. There are folk that we see every day that are looking for a pathway to God. It's interesting because whenever there is a crisis, whenever there is chaos, all of a sudden people get real interested in spiritual things. You have never seen more folk interested in spiritual things than when they have to deal with sickness or when they have to deal with loss or when they have to deal with financial distress. People go real quick looking for God whenever it is that problems show up. That's okay. Our job as believers and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ is to make sure that those who are looking to get to Jesus have a straight way. That's our job. It, it, it is to make sure that all of the bends in the road are straightened out is to make sure that the pathway that is rocky and bumpy is made smooth. It is to make sure that there are minimal hindrances and obstacles so that those who need to get to Jesus can get to Jesus. And, 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 and here's the thing. No pandemic is an excuse. Matter of fact, the pandemic is actually a door opener. Uh -huh. the, the, the crisis is actually the opportunity. The loss is actually an open door because when people are in the wilderness, people are looking for a deliverer. You know when people most go see the doctor? So, some of us, so, some, some of us are, are good at going to see the doctor and making our regular appointments and going to get our checkups. But you know when most people go get the doctor is when they're sick. You know, you know when most folk go and, and, and try to get help, it's when they are between a rock and a hard place. So, so the solution is that when you're in the desert, make a straight way to God. One of the ways that the phrase um, that's, that's in the verse, um, for our God, in, in, in verse 3, it says, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Y'all see that? Well, well, here's what I need you to know. I, I, I looked it up, and one of the ways in the Hebrew that that phrase, for our God, is translated is to say that it is toward our God. So, so what, what we translate as for our God actually can be said to mean toward our God. So you can read verse 3 to say that, that, that we are to make straight in the desert a highway, not for our God, but toward our God. And I need you to know that there's somebody, it's, there's somebody who, who is, is, is in the middle of a wilderness situation, a wilderness context, a wilderness circumstance, and they are looking at the wilderness situation. They are looking at the sickness. They are looking at the loss. They are counting the numbers on their bank account. But what God says is that if you would make a pathway toward our God, that it, it, it'll be like a one-way street. You know, in D.C., there's a whole lot of one-way streets. Don't, don't try to go down a, a street that is one way and you're traveling in the wrong direction because you will be subject to cause an accident. You'll hurt yourself and you'll hurt everybody else. But if you're moving in the direction that you ought to be moving on the one-way street, you'll get to where it is that God wants you to go. Make a highway that goes toward our God and eliminate anything else that is moving in the wrong direction. Because life will always be full of shifts. 
And so, and so we, 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 must become, we, we must become confident enough and faithful enough and courageous enough to become trailblazers. Because here's the second thing. That which you think is broken can be made whole. That's good news right there. That's good news for somebody in a pandemic. That's good news for somebody who feels like you've lost everything and will get back nothing. I need you to know that that which you think is broken can be made whole. Verse four says that every valley, good God, I'm getting happy up in here all by myself. Every valley shall be lifted up. Uh-huh. And every mountain and hill will be brought low. So, so, so all the valleys will be lifted up and all the mountains will be brought low. Let me say it again so you can see it in your head. All the valleys, that's the stuff that's down low. All the valleys will be lifted up and all the mountains will be made low. And the uneven ground will become level. I, 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 need, I need you to pay attention to that because in this life, the Bible says, in this life, you shall have tribulations. Sometimes that tribulation puts you in a valley. And, and, and in a valley uh, uh, is a dangerous place to be because it's down low. In, in Bible times, the, 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 those who would look to rob uh, and, 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 and jump folk, they would get you while you were in the valley. And some of us feel like we in valley situations being taken siege, being, being taken over, being attacked by, fo by folks and stuff that's in the valley. But what the Bible says is that when you become a trailblazer, that the valleys will be lifted up. And then the mountains, the stuff that you think is too, too hard to climb, the stuff that you think is too high to get to, the stuff that you think is too high to get over, all of that stuff will be made low. Uh, and so it's kind of like uh, that song uh, that, that we used to sing that says, have you any rivers that you think are uncrossable? And have you any mountains that you cannot tunnel through? I need you to know that when you become a trailblazer, God will specialize in the things that you can't do by yourself. And he's able to do what no other power can do. So, so the challenge for us is to be driven by a mission rather than a circumstance. One of the things that happens in a crisis is that our, our focus moves, our focus shifts from what God showed you in the spirit to what you see with your natural eyes. And so, so you become consumed with the things that are tangible around you. And, and, and the things that are in the natural realm and you lose sight of the things that are in the spirit realm. And that's why the Bible reminds us that we are to be people who walk by faith and not by sight. But, but, because if you look at the circumstances, it might make you quit. If you look at the situation, it might make you sad. If you look at the situation, it might make you want to take your own life. If you look at the situation, it might make you lose your mind. But if you look at who God is and you recognize who God is and you appreciate the power that God has, then you'll focus on the mission rather than the circumstances because whatever is broken can be made whole. And so then, as we, as we are pressing forward, as we are trailblazing, as we are creating new paths and new ways, I need you to understand that there are some folk that God is calling you to make a way for. There are some folk that God is calling for you to shed some light for. And maybe you don't see it, but maybe you don't see it because you're not looking. Because in times of crisis, Something shifts in the spirit realm. Something shifts in the hearts of those who don't know God. Something stirs in the minds of those who have no relationship with Jesus and makes them want to know the God that you know. Makes them want to experience the power that you experience. Makes you want to know the peace that they have not. Once makes them want to have the joy that you have because the joy that we have 
the world can't give it to us. And so the world can't take it away. And so I'm here to tell you, somebody here already knows, you got a testimony right now. There, there's somebody, matter of fact, go ahead and type your testimony in the box about how God has healed you. Go ahead and type the testimony in the box about how God has made a way for you. Go ahead and type the testimony in the box about how God has made the valley lifted up. Go ahead and type the testimony in the box about how God has brought the mountain low. Go ahead and lift, put the testimony in the box. Because that which is broken, that which you thought could not be healed, that which you thought could not be restored, that which you thought could not be revived, God can make it brand new. Yes, God. And so that's why we got to be trailblazers because somebody needs to see it through your life. That's why we got to be trailblazers because somebody needs to hear it from your mouth. And despite what has happened, despite what has happened, we will see God's glory. That's what the word says. It's right in verse five. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. We're my English teachers, my, my, my English teachers, because y'all know, shall is a non-negotiable proposition. Shall means it will come to fa pass. Shall means that it's no obstacle and no question. It shall means that without a shadow of a doubt, it's going to happen. Verse five says, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh, oh my God, all flesh shall see it together. I, I, I love that part about the all flesh shall see it together. Because some of us think that we got to wait until we get to the great by and by to see it. No, what the Bible says is that all flesh, that means that the kingdom of God on earth, even as it is in heaven. Let me, let me get back to that voice that's crying. I got to get back to this voice that's crying. Um, in biblical days, almost every town had a crier. Almost every town had a crier. And the job of the crier was to announce important news to the people in the town. And so every town had a crier. They had professional criers. Uh huh. They, they had pro pro professional criers. And, and Isaiah's prophecy is actually spoken years down the road by John the Baptist. Where are my Bible students at? Go ahead and, 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 and put it in the box. You, it was John the Baptist was the one who actually spoke into the, into, in the future what Isaiah was writing in the present. It was John the Baptist who said, prepare the way of the Lord. But that's not what I want you to focus on. What I want you to focus on is what Isaiah is talking about when he says glory. I want you to focus on what it, is, what it is that Isaiah is saying when he says that it's the glory of the Lord that shall be revealed. Because Isaiah is not talking about himself. When Isaiah says that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. He's not talking about the current circumstances. When Isaiah says that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, he's not talking about John the Baptist. When he says the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, he's not talking about all the other prophets. When he says that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, I need you to know that he's already talking about Jesus. In the beginning, was the Word, <laughs> and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that Word, which is glory, became flesh. Hebrews says it this way, the one being talked about is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. And after making puri purification for sins, he sits down at the right hand of the Father. That's the glory that Isaiah is talking about. And what he says is that all flesh shall see it together. Y'all just don't know when to shout with the emoji, do you? He, all, in other words, what he's saying is that this ain't going to be something that you just got to sing glory, glory, hallelujah when I lay my burdens down. 
this is not just something that you got to wait until you get on the other side to receive the eschatological reality of the gift and blessing that God has when we get to glory. What he's saying is that all of flesh, that's you, all of flesh, that's me, in the right now, because the kingdom of God is right now, and God is able to heal right now. And God is able to make ways right now. And God is able to provide in a pandemic right now. Good God, the glory that Isaiah is talking about is the Son of God. Who is God? And so I told you, I told you, let me, let me, let me just finish this right now. Real quick. I, I told you um, how I would get lost in the store. Well, I got good news. There was never a time that my mother did not make her way to the customer service desk. When she heard her son's name called over the PA system, my mother came and got her baby boy. And, and I need for you to know, that's why this is a moment and a time for trailblazing. That's why 2021 is a time when God's going to make ways like you ain't never seen God make ways before. That's why in 2021, there's going to be people flocking to Jesus that you've never seen flocking before because people are looking for pathways to be made straight. And I got good news for you. The Savior who sits on high and who looks down low is careful to come and get his people. He won't leave you at the customer service desk. He'll come and ransom his people and love on his people and save his people. Yes, God, and redeem his people because people are looking for Jesus. And this is why the church has to break the mold. This is why we going out to any and everywhere. This is why we gonna introduce some folk to Jesus. This is why folk are coming from the east and from the west. This is why we need not fear. This is why we'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. This is why no pandemic can take us out because glory will come and glory will save you and glory will keep you and glory will deliver you and glory will make ways for you and glory will heal you and glory will transform you and glory died to save you. Hallelujah for glory. Who is the Lamb of God? Who takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah to the King. Where are the trailblazers in the house? Type trailblazer in the box. 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 Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. That's what 2021 is about. That's what 2021 is about. That's what the pandemic was about. That's what the sickness was about. That's what the suffering was about. That's what the loss was about. It was about giving you what you need in order that you might be a trailblazer. Yes, life is going to be hard. That's, that, that, that's just a reality of life. Life will always be full of twists and turns. But that which you think is broken and beyond repair can be will be, shall be made whole. And despite all you've been through, we shall see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Hey, you know what? There's never a time when God gifts me with the privilege of sharing the word that God does not minister to my own spirit. And I'm encouraged to trailblaze, and I, I hope that you are as well. I hope that you know that God is making rough places plain, and God is preparing to show glory in your own life. It's Valentine's Day. We say that that's the love holiday. Well, I got some, something to tell you. The, the love of God is the greatest love that you will ever experience. And he's extending that love to you and he's extended it to me. And if you would uh, receive the grace uh, and the salvation that he makes possible by shedding blood on the cross, guess what? You can be saved. 
So I need to extend an invitation and you can do one of two things. First of all, if you are prepared to exercise the faith and pray that prayer of salvation, we have ministers that are prepared to receive it and to pray with you. If you would just text connect to that very same number that's on your screen, 202-798-8927. And then remember, right after worship today, we have the breakout. I'd love to invite you into that space so we can talk some more, so we can get to one, know one another. And if you have questions, we would love to answer your questions and to pray with you. It's going to be right after worship. Come on and hang out with us for a few minutes. I pray that you're encouraged. I pray that you are already making plans to step out and to launch into spaces and territories in which God is going to show his greatness and his might and his love in your life. Y'all be blessed. All right, and I'll see you in one of our virtual spaces. Matter of fact, the breakout real soon. All right, see you soon.
your hands all over the room and say this one This one be my soul no more That thing that's been keeping you up at night won't be This one be my soul no more Having just enough 